First of all, this is Ronnie Bennett. Second of all, she may go out of sync completely because we don't know what's wrong with Skype today, but there's always something wrong with Skype. <laughs> and lastly, I've got, uh, that's not my fault, folks. What, what, what happened to you? <laughs> you should see the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, last Thursday I was leaving the building where my chemo clinic is. I had spent the day getting chemo. And you know those rubber mats they put down in buildings when it's been raining outside? Yeah. I tripped over a Oh, boy. Leaving the building. Oh, boy. And went down and smashed my head, and I have a bad elbow and a bad knee now, and uh, and a black eye, as you can see. What's funny, though, is originally I had a big hematoma up here, mm -hmm. and what I forgot, this happened to me once before about 40 years ago. Overnight, blood follows gravity and so from the hematoma up here it moved down here <laughs> there you are <laughs> and, and uh, i was at the supermarket the other day and i've been shopping there for years i know these people you know it's a hi hello how are the kids that sort of thing mm -hmm. as i went through the 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 supermarket not one person mentioned my eye. When I told a friend about it on the phone, he said, oh, they just thought you hit the bottle again. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. So that's going to take a while to get yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In case, uh, in case you're just tuning in, she's out of sync, folks. Yes. I, I have again, no I'm idea. out of sync? We, we have no idea why. Uh, but uh, we'll just live with it. We, we tried signing on several times with you today, and uh, uh, all of a sudden you would go completely out of sync. So I can't, I don't know anything how to run about how to run Skype. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't either anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's oh, crazy. Other people do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, uh, so it, it, I, this was right outside the hospital, did you say? Just at the door, not, it's not a hospital, it's a medical building. And just as I was leaving, to go through the door to leave to go get my lift ride home, uh, I tripped over that mat and went down really hard on an elbow and knee in my head. Oh, and wow. so, you know, by the way, the, who knew that these places have their own police force? Then the police showed up and it said, OHSU police. And then more people came around. There were 10 or 12 people yeah. all trying to help me all at once. And they insisted on calling the EMTs who arrived with all the bells and whistles and sirens and wanted to take me to the emergency room. But by then the pain had gone away and I stood up and I wasn't bleeding anywhere and nothing was broken. But by the way, the next day I was talking to a friend mm -hmm. and a friend of hers you know, who lives in Manhattan was bicycling to work as she does every day. Somebody came around the corner in a car 100 miles an hour, banged into her, and she broke both arms. Both. Think about living with both two broken arms. Wow. You can't. Wow. Wow. Here's Well, you know what happened with my wife was she was walking down the street on Fifth Avenue, and some tourist came along and uh, just pushed her by accident, uh, and she fell to the ground and broke her knee. So she had to go in, have an operation, have screws put in the knee. Uh, uh, what was it, uh, 12 weeks of being in a brace and a constant physical therapy, and the doctor says, it'll feel better in about a year. Yeah, that's a, you know. That's how long it took me to feel better after my big surgery in tw 2017. But think about you can't use either of your arms, not either one. Yeah. yeah. Think about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I mean, what, what all I is, what's the prognosis on that horrible thing on your face going away? If there's any bruise, it'll go away in a few days, you know. Now, did you bruise more because of the chemo? I don't think so. I didn't ask. I don't think so. Yeah. And I hit my head. There was a big hematoma here. Overnight, it sunk down there, which was a surprise to me. I got up the next morning. I brushed my teeth. I started the coffee. I hadn't looked in a mirror. It was had 30 minutes before I walked past a mirror. I looked in, and I thought, oh, my God, what happened to me? <laughs> 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 
you know, I, well, I, my, my, my hat's off to you. There we go. My hat's <laughs> off to you because uh, any other woman, because of vanity, would not appear with me today to oh, do this. Oh, come on. It's just a black eye, you know? It's just a black eye. Oh, you know? boy. And don't you feel terrible when you fall? Because being older, they all come rushing to you. Like, can we help you up? Oh well, man! Well, a little kid fell, I'd go rushing to him too. You yeah, know? yeah, I guess. But uh, it, it doesn't matter about the age. And it, and I really was surrounded by all kinds of people that all wanted to help. Yeah. And uh, and all you, after it stops really, really hurting, all you want is to stand up. But nobody wants you to stand up. <laughs> So anyway, I survived. I got home, and this happened. And that's, you know, wow. better than two broken arms, let me tell you. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I guess it is. Uh, but, geez, I mean, come on. You know. So how's your health? How are you doing? How, how, well, what? I figured out something. It takes a long time, you know. Yeah. Every two weeks I have chemo on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then I wear a body pack for a day and a half after that that pumps more chemo into me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I get a day or two when I feel pretty much okay with very, very minor uh, side effects, not worth talking about. Um, and then the fatigue hits for two or three days. And during that time, I realized this time I get really depressed. I think, why am I doing this? Let's just stop it. Because um, I feel just, I, I, you have to nap twice a day for two hours for those two days. And uh, and then this morning, it's as usual, Tuesday morning, um, I wake up and I feel fine. I mean, if not like I was, you know, before cancer, I certainly feel good. I can get up, I can go places, I can do things. Um, and, uh, and then I feel fine until, you know, a couple of days after the next chemo. So as long as it's down to three days, maybe three and a half days that I don't feel good, um, out of 14, that, um, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I can live with that for now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so what, and what did they, and you, you got a good report on your last, uh, your last, um, uh, CT scan, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we'll wait in two months, they'll do another one and we'll see what's happened. But in between, uh, what I am is both, I think both from the chemo and the cancer, I operate in general overall at half speed nowadays mm -hmm. um that it takes me about twice as long to do everything i used to do uh, a lot faster <laughs> one friend here in oregon said oh ronnie you just finally slowed down to oregon speed from new york <laughs> 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 um, but uh uh so I, I have to learn to live with that mm -hmm. and then i have to stop and rest sometime when you know, you're changing the bed maybe halfway through. I have to stop and rest. That seems to take a lot of energy these days, that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, people, a lot of people tell me I should get somebody to clean house for me. Um, it's very expensive here compared to where I've lived before. And um, and so far I can do it. It just takes me longer. So it's okay. Yeah. How much does it cost to get your house clean? Uh, clean is a cleaning woman to come in. Um, you know, I don't remember. I checked on it a few months ago, and it was higher than I wanted to pay. Because every two weeks we pay a woman, I think it's $120, $140 to come in and mm -hmm. clean, which I don't consider unreasonable, mainly because uh, I am... Uh, um, I don't consider it unreasonable because when somebody's cleaning up my mess, I feel they should be compensated well for it, you know? Okay, <laughs> All right. Uh, I've always felt uncomfortable about somebody cleaning up my house, actually. I always felt very uncomfortable about that. You know, the only reason we have a cleaning woman in here every two weeks is because Marjorie was used to that. So that's why we do it. Otherwise, I just clean the house myself, you know. You know, we do what we do best as we can. And things, um, I think you get older, even if you don't have cancer, I think just getting older slows you down. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and the thing is that, you know, I lose two full days a month just being at the cancer clinic all day. Mm -hmm. Then I lose those three or four days twice a month when I don't feel good after the chemo. Um, and other than that, I'm slow. So 
um, it's I, it's it's okay. Give I mean it's it's what it is. You know, it's I think that getting cancer, um, you know, it's a crapshoot. Some people do, some people don't. Yeah. Um, it is what it is, and I've chosen to deal with it this way with this chemo for now. That will change whenever I feel I need to change that or stop it. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just. You know, I've come to see it. I think I haven't. I haven't thought this through completely, so this is an unformed thought, if you will. Um, but I think that as long as you're lucky enough to be in my condition, which is, except for the chemo side effects for a few days, I feel fine. I don't have any yet any cancer uh, effects, uh, and I, I've had no pain. I'm knocking wood while I say that. Um, and I think that having a disease, whether it's terminal like mine or a chronic disease that many people have in old age, it's it's it comes with the territory. It's part of living. Fold it into your life and move on. Do the do the best with the things that you can do and enjoy them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's about where I am these days. Um, so subject to change over time. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, we always want that update. And by the way, if you've just joined us, number one, she's she's out of sync. Don't worry about that. That's just Skype fucking up. And uh, and the black eye is uh, because she slipped and fell. And that that was it. Plain and simple, you know. Yes, but it's a better story if I if somebody hit me and I hit him back, isn't it? Did they? It happened at a hospital. So did doctors rush Not out to at help a hospital, you? At a medical center. Building. Medical center. Okay, so did doctors come out to help you? No, they don't. Oh, by the way, no, they don't. Oh, geez. It's all EMT. There are only several hundred doctors in that building, but they're busy doing other things. So the EMTs come and take you to a hospital. But if you yeah, but want. you would think also the facility would care about legal action, you know, so they would want to make sure you were taken care of well. Well, the the police assigned to that place were there, mm-hmm. and they everybody was very helpful and very nice. They checked my eyes, you know, the EMTs, that they're focusing properly, and we made sure that there were no broken bones and I wasn't bleeding anywhere. And um, there you go. I'll tell you what happened. I, I fell on Broadway a couple of weeks ago. Took a real buster, as they call it. And I, I fell down, and... Uh, all of a sudden, people come running over to me. Oh, let's help you. You know, it's like the old man fell. <laughs> okay, I felt I like they were all looking at me like I was I the disagree. old guy. I think if a little kid fell, people would rush over just as fast. It's yeah, not I, about being an old man. It's about falling. Okay, but let's say a 20-year-old. Yeah, people are going to rush over uh, to that, too. I don't think Anybody so. Anybody who falls, I don't think people so. go help. Well, all I know is I felt embarrassed, you know. Well, so did I. I mean, you you just when you're not on your when you're not on your feet, and when you fall down, you just feel foolish, you know. Yeah. Even if you couldn't help it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, let, let, what are your uh, what are your uh, readers to your blog talking about these days? Is there is there some predominant discussion that's important to them? They talk about whatever I write about. Hmm. Um. And uh, and they're very good at it. I mean, I have great readers and and very thoughtful people and funny people, if that's called for. Mm-hmm. So it just it depends. Uh, the more, <coughs> excuse me, that's part of of <coughs> this whole thing too. Yeah. Uh, so if I'm writing about, of uh, the other day I wrote about being a professional patient, mm-hmm. and of course that old people who read my blog. They have a lot of experience with that too, so they plugged in a lot of information from their half. The thing that seems to be universal about being a professional patient is we all despise counting out our pills into those little plastic boxes. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and I've been I've been thinking, why doesn't somebody invent something where, like, you throw all your pills into it, or you throw them in one at a time, and then it just dispenses them to the little oh, thing? Oh, they have that. You they, can buy them now. It costs more, of course. And it comes, you know, let's say a month's supply in a box. Mm-hmm. But your morning and your evening and maybe noon, if you have them, come in a little packet. Oh, oh, so that, oh yeah. So they count it out for you. Yeah, they do that for you. But I'm talking about a device. 
right? Because right now we have to take these pill boxes or just you, you have 30 days there and then you put one of each in 30 it. days? Mine has seven. Really? I have the 30 day one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're more expensive than the seven day ones. <laughs> Uh, and, and I, and I uh, put one pill in each one, and then I do the next pill, and I do the next pill, and I do the next pill, and then I'm through. I close all the little lids, and I've got a month's worth done. But it would be so much nicer if all I had to do was, like, pour 30 pills into, 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 into a funnel, and it just, boom, 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 and then the next one, boom, 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 boom. And I'm trying to think of, if any of you out there are inventors, here's the idea, okay? Run with it. But it already comes from your pharmacy in the little packets, you know. Yeah, yeah, they and do. And people always recommend that to me. But um, first of all, it's more expensive. Drugs are expensive enough. And um, and I can still count. I haven't lost that faculty yet. And um, and it's just annoying. It's, it's not like it's a big deal. It's annoying. And the funny, and because, you know, how fast time goes when you get yeah. old, yeah. I usually do it on Saturday and then next thing I know, I'm doing it again, and it feels like I did it yesterday. You know, well, like a week didn't go by. I just, right. Ugh. Yeah. So, but I mean, the fact is that, I, for instance, I have, um, uh, through my union plan, a drug plan that sends me, that sells me 30, uh, 90 days worth at a time. You have to buy 90 days worth at a time. It's much cheaper, by the way. Uh, in fact, I'm paying as much for three months as I used to pay for one month. Okay, uh, but anyway, uh, so I is get. This, stop a minute! Is this some old people's conversation? Absolutely, or what? <laughs> and fuck them, fuck them, fuck them if they don't want us talking old people talk. So uh, anyway, I get I get three months worth. Okay, and I'm just up to the up to my ass in these pill bottles. You know, of thirty pills each in the bottles. And uh, it's it's like it's huge. You, I take home this big valise full of pills every month, every three months. So you I know. have big pill bottles. You know the the brown pill bottles. Oh yeah. When I buy more than one month's worth, they they give me a much bigger bottle. I never yeah. saw such big pill bottles before. Yeah, but anyway. So I mean, what happened was they put us on this thing uh, with I can't remember the name of the company now. Where, where you have to order three months at a time, which is fine, you know. I, I, I thought it was going to cost three times as much, and it only costs uh, the same as it was costing me before for one month. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I would whisper that if I were you. What? I would whisper that piece of knowledge if I were you. Don't let anybody know. What do you mean? It's, Companies it's, will raise the prices that you're doing. No, what happens is there are quite a few plans like this that people have where they can subscribe to three months, and it does. They do cut down on the price. You know what? Oh you know God, what? Whisper this. What, don't give them any ideas. What used to amaze me was I used to take a uh, 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 not an antidepressant. It was a mood elevator or whatever called Zoloft. And it used to cost me X number of dollars for the five milligrams or something. I'm just throwing out a number here. I don't remember what the number was. It was a pill. Let it go at that. And my doctor said, well, let me prescribe the tens for you. And I said, why? He said, because they don't cost any more than the fives, and then you can break them in half and oh, get so the daily dosage. As many as yeah, point. yeah. And that was the thing I could never understand. If you go and let's say you're supposed to get five grams or something, and instead you buy the 20 grams or something, the price either isn't that much more or is exactly the same. That's the one I could never figure out. Well, I don't know what to tell you. That and the great mis the, my great Hertz mystery, which is uh, why is it if I want to rent a car for three days, does it cost me $700? But if I want to rent it for a week, it's only 325 And hey, <laughs> your answer is right there. Go for the week. <laughs> well, yeah, but then what do I do with the car for a week? I don't want to park it in New York City. You kidding me? You know. So it, it uh, I just got to figure out if I need three days, I should just take a week and go somewhere for a week, you know. Yes. But, uh, I mean, the, but that, that doesn't make sense. You it used to make didn't used to make sense that when you flew across the United this doesn't hold true anymore but you used to fly across the United States 
and you were going to just stay on the other end like I was moving there, I had to buy a round-trip ticket because it was cheaper than buying a one-way ticket. These are the mysteries of life that... You well, know, I've given up on those kinds of mysteries of life in my condition. Yeah. Just, I just go with the flow now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> um, um, so they say, you're, they say at least your, your, your cancer is slowing down, and that's good. That's what the chemo is supposed to do is slow the growth. Yeah. And that's what the last CT scan showed. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are, and in another... Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I think it's six weeks, five or six weeks they'll do uh, the next scan, and we'll see if it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Now, I imagine your 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 readers are uh, to her blog, which is timegoesby.net, uh, are probably very concerned about, you know, about Medicare and about health plans and things like that, because when you get to be at our age, you know, you sit down at dinner with a bunch of older people now, and you sit at the table... How are you doing? Well, I went to the doctor. I've got blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And then it eventually gets to how much are you paying for your medical care? You know, you've got Medicare, but you got that other dreaded 20% that Medicare doesn't pay for. Yes, you know. but the, most people buy a supplemental policy to yeah. cover that. Yeah, but the supplemental policies are not cheap. You know, I mean, uh, here uh, cheaper than what it's cost to treat me for the last eighteen. Well, months. Well, that's true. They lost Much the cheaper. they lost the bet with you. You know, yes, they did. because that's yes, all it is. It's a bet on the part of the uh, of the uh, Some medical. People hardly ever use there uh, until now. I never used. I hardly ever used my medical coverage. I was healthy. Yeah. All my life. Yeah. So. Um, but I'm making up for it now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, and and I have to, you know, whenever we talk about this, I have to talk about the people who treat me, from you know the surgeons on down to the people who say hi and check you in when you arrive for an appointment. Is that where I go at OHSU? Every person there is smart, caring, concerned, good at their jobs, just fantastic people. Yeah, as I've said over and over and over again, as far as I can tell. Not one of them ever has a bad day. Now, we know that's not true. Everybody has a bad day, but they never show the patients. Yeah. And they're just amazing people. And uh, I think they're different. People who are caregivers are different from you and me. And they're amazing people. Caregiving is a skill, you know. It, it, I think it's more than that. I think it involves a lot of empathy. Well, that, that that's part of the skill. I mean, you you you, you, know, you well, I don't I don't think you learn empathy like that in the same way you learn how to do a, a put a bandage well, on. Well, from the get go, I think you have to be a very special kind of person to want to go into that line of work, because mm -hmm. it's a constant case of depression. You know, I mean, when you. But it's not. It's not. They, I talked to some of the people, the nurses and other people about this, mm -hmm. and they get a great deal of pleasure out of helping us. Yeah. It's um. It, it yeah, but I'm saying it takes a special. Let me put it this way: Could you do it? I couldn't. No. no. You know, and, and and it's not to say I don't have empathy, but I think that if I were dealing every day with people who were dying, mm -hmm. I think I would have a hard time dealing with that. You know, um, but that's you know, me. You, be, you don't become friends with these people, but you become friendly. Mm -hmm. And you get to know them. You might know about their kids. You know, you talk about books you read while they're doing whatever they have to do that day with you. And and so it's more than just, you know, somebody, some anonymous person putting a bandage on your finger. You know, it's, it's much more than that. And they remember your name and... Um, and you joke around, and um, and and it's it's almost although you're not there every day, it's almost like people you work with mm -hmm. at your job is that they're the, they become that kind of friend, and uh, and it must be difficult. They don't talk about it. I've never asked either. Yeah. But it, but you're right. It must be difficult. It, it, but it's very special. Very special. Hey, well, listen, we've run out of time, and I just want to tell everybody, if you minded the fact that. Ronnie was out of sync today. Just think of this as a badly dubbed foreign film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, okay. take care, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? And hope oh, that we get you, you in better sync. 
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Ben.